There's no one in the world who can say that in every day, in every way, their practice is getting better and better. The practice has its ups and downs, and you have to learn how to live with that. Because the mind is a complex thing. Lots of different things going on all at the same time. And with, as with any complex system, sometimes one little thing can have a huge effect. And other times lots and lots of effort seems to go nowhere. The effects come out some other place far away. And so you have to maintain a certain equanimity about the whole thing. Not that we're not trying to get someplace. We definitely are. But in the Buddha's teachings on making a determination, one of his determinations is that you try to maintain calm in the face of the ups and downs that are sure to come your way. Otherwise, you, you're never going to get where you want to go. You start getting excited when things go well, and you get careless. And you get depressed when things are not going well, and you give up. All you could think about is how good it used to be and how bad it is now. And that's not the topic of your meditation. The topic of your meditation is, well, what are you doing right now? You focus your attention there. And you have to remember that the path is a series of causes, and even those causes have their causes. And some of the ones you have some control over, and others you don't have so much control over. And you're not going to know which are which until you've actually made an effort. This is why the discernment that comes from reading and thinking things through is one thing. The discernment that comes from actually trying to develop qualities in the mind is something else. In the books it all sounds very straightforward. They even use a, an image of a stairway. You go from one step to the next to the next to the next, and it all sounds very orderly and linear, very progressive. And you think you're on one step and find, suddenly find yourself way down in another step that you hadn't expected. Start worrying about yourself. You're going in the wrong direction. Well, the books explain things in terms of steps because that's the nature of books. The Buddha does talk about the complexity of karma and some seeds that are gestating in your field of karmic seeds may not be showing anything right now. doesn't mean they're not there, but there are times when something really positive from the past suddenly blossoms. And then soon after that, something negative from the past suddenly blossoms. And as for what you're doing in the present moment, it all seemed pretty much the same. This is why the Buddha said, our first reaction to pain and suffering is bewilderment. How did this happen? What's going on? So we have to search to find a way out, to try to understand what's going on. And it's good to keep that point in mind, that your mind is very complex, causality is very complex, and what you're experiencing at any one point has some extent to do with what you're doing right now. and also something to do with what you did in the past. And of course, what you did in the past is, in many cases, buried to you. You have no idea what that was. So this understanding helps maintain your attitude of equanimity. I mean, you actually are doing the right thing, but the conditions are not yet ripe for the right thing to start showing its effects, at least not as much as they could show. And you stay confident in the fact that well, at least right now you're trying to do something skillful. You're not harming anyone. You're trying not to harm yourself. And you focus more of your attention not on the ups and the downs, but simply on doing what you're supposed to do. And John Mahabua talks about a period in his practice where he began to discern that there would be a cycle. Things would go really well for a while, and then they'd crash. And then they'd go well for a while, and then they'd crash. 
and he got so that he was anticipating the crash, and perhaps the anticipation helped the crash happen. And then he finally decided that this riding the waves was not going anywhere at all, so he was just going to do what he knew he should be doing. In his case, he focused on the word butto, and he wouldn't care for whether it was going anyplace. Whether the results were showing themselves quickly or slowly, he just knew this is the right thing to do, I'll stick with it. This is, of course, where you start encountering your doubts about this particular practice or this particular meditation method. Is the breath right for you? Maybe I should do noting, or maybe I should do scanning, or maybe I should do a meditation word. Well, at least start out with the breath. It's the safest of all the meditation methods. And see what you can do with the breath. Because at the very least, you know, while you're with the breath, you're at the right spot. This was the spot where the Buddha was when he gained awakening. Right where the mind and the body meet at the breath. It's simply the combination of his past karma and his present karma enabled him to see a lot more clearly what was going on right here. So you try to focus right here. Then the question comes, how much pressure should you put on the focus, and how do you conceive the breath, and where in the body you're going to focus? Okay, Those are areas where you have a choice. How much do you want to experiment with the breath, and how much do you just want to let it do its own thing? That's another area where you have a choice. But jumping around from one method to another, saying, well, this doesn't seem to work, well, I'll try that one. Well, this doesn't work, I'll try that one. You're never going to get anywhere. Got to hold on to one thing. While you're here, hold on to the breath. See what that can do. Because the only way you're going to overcome your doubts about any particular technique is to actually do it and not give up at the first obstacle. Years back when I was a young monk, I was in a monastery staying away from, I was away from Ajahn Fuang for a while, and I was having some problems with the breath. And so I went to see one of the Ajahns at this other monastery, and his first reaction was, well, maybe that breath isn't the right topic for you. And I knew I was getting the wrong advice. And I noticed in later years that particular monk didn't seem to be getting anywhere in his meditation because he was always jumping from one thing to another. So the only way you're going to learn about a technique, how good it is, how right it is for you, is to do it and give it your best. Try to use as much ingenuity and discernment as you can while you're using it, while you're focused on that technique. And focus on the causes. Now whether the results are going to happen quickly or slowly, you have no control over that. You have a little bit of control in the fact that you're actually doing the right things. Whether it's going to come fast or slow depends on a lot of the other factors that are set in motion by your past actions, and those you can't change. So try to maintain this attitude of calm and equanimity in the face of the ups and downs. When things are going well, remember not to get complacent. Sometimes it seems the mind is so clear and settled that it will never go back to its old greed, aversion, delusion ever again. And then, of course, it does. And part of the reason, of course, is that you got complacent. When you got something good, do your best to protect it, maintain it. When things aren't going well, remind yourself, okay, they can go well. Maybe you're just suffering from some bad karma sprouts right now. They're blossoming and growing, and so you simply have to ride them out. Just have confidence as long as you're focused in the right spot, the breath feels good, you're doing the right thing. Remember all those in the past who hit troughs in their practice. And yet, we're able to come out of the trough. 
There was nothing superhuman about them. It was simply they had the patience and the equanimity to maintain a state of calm in the face of all the problems they had. That's when you can look at the, the other elements in your determination. Are you using your discernment? Are you really being true to what you told yourself you're going to do? Are you really letting go of the things that are getting in the way? If you're not, okay, you've got work to do. If you are, well, just keep on doing what you're doing. Try to refine your discernment. Try to be quicker in letting go of unskillful thoughts. And maintain, maintain that attitude. You're going to stick with this and see it through. Be true to your original determination. Because it's only when you stick with those qualities that the practice is going to go anywhere. And it will go. It does develop. It's not going from point X to point Y. It stays right here, but things develop here. So we're going to stay right here to make sure that when the opportunity for them to develop happens, you're there. So we can help them along. 